uh, patient condition. Now, uh, the most important uh, question is, which diet can I suggest for a diabetic patient? Because most of them don't come up with a lot of complication or don't end up uh, in ICUs. They end up in clinics where they just want a lifestyle modification, where, which can actually lead to a better A1C level. So we have low carb, high fat and high protein, high fiber. So we have also different uh, research studies that have been done to find the efficacies of these diet. And here something here I would like to highlight is HAES, that is uh, health at every size is a new non-diet approach that's been uh, in town. Here, uh, uh, this particular type of approach is uh, good for people having psychotic issues, especially eating disorders. So which wins the battle? Uh, this is something uh, I came up with. So uh, to understand which diet should I give for a patient, I always look uh, towards the sustainability of a particular meal. And I also go by low glycemic index and load, check for adequate macros. Because when I have a good amount of macros in my diet, definitely my micros will also be better. And also I will uh, try to add all five food groups but in different proportions and the best proportions work uh, works in um, based on individual basis and also a high fiber diet. So here I have come up with, a, you know, a simple dietary approach, which I would use for selecting which diet should I give a patient. So if I talk about low carbohydrate with high protein, it is for people who can avoid staple grains for maybe, you know, for people who have just migrated from different countries, it can be a good uh, start of people who can go with good amount of uh, dietary restrictions can uh, follow a low carbohydrate, high protein diet. High carbohydrate, high fiber diet is for people who, uh, who have, uh, uh, you know, especially old age people or people who will not be able to compromise on roti, chapati and rice. Low carbohydrate, high fat diet is for individuals with no complications, but for a very short duration, uh, preferably non-vegetarian because high fat diet can be easily achieved with non-vegetarian foods rather than people who are on a vegan or vegetarian diets. And uh, this has to be done under very strict supervision. So I would always recommend people to uh, go to a, a, a nutritionist who definitely for uh, who, who can give a well versed ketogenic diet. Not all nutritionists in town can uh, plan a good ketogenic diet here today. And a high fat, high protein diet for people again with for a short duration with no complications and non-vegetarians preferably. Low glycemic index, most of the individuals, uh, especially the individuals who fall under uh, the, you know, not very diet conscious and very diet conscious categories. And a high fiber diet for people, uh, for normal individuals, but they shouldn't be having any GI complications and anemias, especially because uh, fiber uh, actually causes, binds with, you know, uh, the iron, uh, hinders the iron absorption. So people were having anemia and certain GI complications or might not be a good suit for high fiber diets. Mediterranean diets for individuals who have good self-control and can control the amount of, uh, 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 you know, uh, alcohol that they can consume. And again, Mediterranean diet is not really suitable for people who cannot avoid staple grains. Intermittent fasting uh, for people who are not on medications that require normal meal timings and especially certain uh, conditions like TB or uh, th uh, having, you know, thyroid medication, uh, not really thyroid, but especially TB and other malnourished, um, uh, uh, malnourished and high catabolic uh, state now, patients might not be a good fit for intermittent fastings or people who have binge eating and erratic work hours like they work on shift basis. So they might uh, find intermittent fasting quite difficult to follow. Non-diet approaches, as I told you, Haynes is an again a non-diet approach. So the, this is especially for people who need psychological intervention or uncooperative individuals. In certain cases, uh, a dietary intervention might not be a good fit for people having psych uh, psychotic issues. For them, we go with non-diet approaches. Plant-based diet for vegetarians or people who, uh, who are ready to change their meal pattern to a more vegan kind of lifestyle uh, is better. But they also might be uh, needing supplementation, not suitable for anemic or malnourished individuals as well. 
So this uh, table is totally out of what I uh, uh, will first look into a patient's profile before uh, you know uh, thinking about what kind of uh, diet approach can I follow for them. And uh, then we have another case. Uh, he, this case is typically for uh, following a non-diet approach. Uh, he has been uh, with me for follow-up for around 2.5 years, uh, where his HBNC uh, did come down to, you know, uh, around 1% one, 1 of HBA1C was uh, definitely down, but he was not able to follow even uh, a day's meal, which I had recommended him. That was because he was a uh, highly uh, under psychiatric, me psychiatric medication and he needed behavior modification as well. So he's currently under a non-dietary approach and uh, uh, the entire chunk of diet itself has been removed from his treatment modality because the main focus about 80 to 90 percent of focus is on uh, changing his ment uh, behavior so he's now with a psychologist currently and then we will be talking about the concept of diabetes reversal so when i talk about diabetes reversal there are two different terms that we have to be really careful with one is remission the other one is reversal so a remission is basically maintenance of a1c in range in the absence of medication but reversal is the absence of diabetes without further support in remission they definitely need further support but in reversal they might not need uh, i'm not a, a firm believer in reversal but i do believe in remission because i have seen people uh, who enter into the state of remission who are under you know good uh, lifestyle control uh, the next one will be an uh, important uh, slide where we have to uh, educate people on insulin management, especially people who are needing to use an insulin pump, how to use it, administration of insulin, self-monitoring and adjusting when to and when not to, continuous follow-up. Uh, the importance of follow-up is very important when they are into insulin management and injection sites and rotation. So here we have two different cases where, you know, one did not know basic insulin administration. So ended up using, uh, uh, you know, injecting insulin at the same site, leading to a certain pain and swelling. Another person, uh, she used the same needle for multiple times. So uh, you wouldn't believe she just used two to three needles for the whole year to prick herself to check her blood glucose. Uh, and she was on insulin. So what happened is because of the pain, uh, she actually discontinued monitoring her blood glucose. So these are some simple things that we have to keep in mind before starting up with insulin management. The next one will be telemedicine. Uh, telemedicine is becoming a very, uh, you know, fancy thing nowadays, uh, especially post-COVID, so, uh, which, you know, has banners stating continuous care, excessive monitoring, and this will continue scare will actually lead to excessive monitoring and that will lead to burnout issues so what we must keep in mind is uh, we shouldn't try to commercialize telemedicine and keep it simple and realistic always in diabetes i do believe that continuously monitoring them for 24 hours a day doesn't really make sense they should have their independence so that they feel like they are in control of their health and not someone else is always uh, watching them what they eat or what they do and uh, as always, interdisciplinary team management becomes important and behavior management, especially with people who come in walk-in clinics, behavior management becomes very, very important. So involvement of a psychologist in the diabetic care management team is an important aspect because now I see a lot of people ending up with eating disorders uh, when we try to do tele uh, uh, telemedicine uh, modalities. So at the end, uh, again, Everything is the same. There is nothing much that has been changed uh, in diabetes management, but we have a lot of different challenges, as I told you, uh, as we were discussing throughout the session. So it's like one diet does not fit all and not all diabetic medication, uh, no, uh, like uh, age old diabetic recommendations, like no refined sugars, no speed, balanced diet still holds good. Continuous blood monitoring is important. Sustainable practices with lifestyle modification still holds good. So new challenges need new solutions. So we just have to keep in search of newer solutions, but still try to be, you know,